So what are dashboard reports? So they're HTML templates that pull in data from one or more query reports. So the query reports are SQL or Query Builder, and they take data from the database and show it to you. Um, dashboard reports present data from reports, and that can be um, through charts. Uh, it can also show multiple reports at once, so multiple query reports at once. So you can get um, stack five different query reports on top of there and say, okay, for this page ID, what are all the details that I need to know? Here's some examples. Um, so this is an action rate progress report, um, and it says, Okay, for this time period, uh, how many people are acting? Um, and you can see the same thing visually, I'm sorry, you can see the same thing in chart form up here. So we have both a table and then also a total. Um, some, this is like really insignificant, but this little asterisk that says doesn't include sign up and unsubscribe to your donations is also kind of important. Um, dashboard reports let you both visualize query reports, but also add arbitrary HTML. So you can put in any content that you want into a dashboard report. This is another um, dashboard, and it takes the day that you're on and the previous 24 hours, and it uses that to um, fill in the time period for all of these different individual reports. Um, do those make sense so far, or do you need additional examples on that? No, that seems good. Cool. Um, so this is a really basic example. Um, you can see two different um, pieces of data that we're showing. So we have arbitrary HTML, and again, more HTML. And then this is two different ways that you can pull in the results of a query report. Um, you can say, I just want you to drop in the list size report. That's all I want. Just drop in the whole list size report. Or um, I want the uh, report that's active in the last X days, and it says X in the report title, which is a hint that it needs um, a parameter, but we're going to say 30 as days. Um, and this is breaking down what you saw in the last slide. So there are two ways to include report results in your dashboard. You can do the um, basic way, which is curly brace, curly brace, report dot name of the report, and then close out the curly braces or you can do curly brace percent, um, and then report name with value as parameter one, value two as parameter two, and then close out the percent curly brace. Um, and those are pulling in the reports as parameters, or I'm sorry, pulling in the values as the parameters. Parameters work um, the same way in dashboards that they do in query reports. So what we talked about in the query report training was being able to leave a blank and then having and then filling that in with data um, as you run the report so that you can make a reusable report. So the parameters here can be used either to make a reusable report um, in that you can on the fly plug in particular data or a reusable report in that um, you can create a dashboard that uh, shows up with the page and then automatically pulls in data about that particular page or something like that, where the parameter itself is actually associated with where the report is showing up. But we'll talk more about that later because I know that's a little confusing in the abstract. Um, so, actually, backing up just a second, uh, there won't be parameters that you're passing in with specifics on this type of including reports, 
But for this type, um, sometimes you don't want to directly pass in the values of the parameters, right? So if you're writing out this entire statement, you would say report name with 141 as page ID and uh, you know 2018 920 as date, um, right? So you're explicitly explicitly stating the values of all the parameters. But in order to make that report reusable, um, you might need the parameters to be something that's filled in on the fly. Is that a clear difference? Yeah. Um, so to do that, you can use a required parameter tag, which just looks like this. And it's saying that for uh, reports with reports that are called with this style, with the um, curly brace percent style, uh, it's saying that we're going to fill in the parameter later. Um, this is something that people get a little tripped up on sometimes. So I'm going to say this and then we'll show it in a few different ways. Um, if you have just the double curly brace and the report that you're talking about has a parameter in it, it will show you the parameter as you run the dashboard. There are a lot of reasons that you want to use the more complicated and explicit way of writing it though. Um, and so we're going to be working with the ones that are styled like this throughout. Um, reports, dashboard reports use Django as the templating language. And so um, you can see some of that throughout. But also, if you get stuck on dashboard reports, that can be a helpful resource to go back and look at. Um, and I say that because the double curly brace in Django is the uh, is the indicator for just showing a variable, and so you're just showing the report, whereas the curly brace percent is an indicator of a template tag, so it's a way of processing code. Okay, so if you put in the first one, like what's an example of something you would be using that or. Yep. So let's go back to these examples. So if you just want to drop in the whole mm -hmm. report, you could do that. Just okay. Like that. Um, there are a few other ways that I'm going to co cover in a second that the um, that the curly brace percent way is gives you more flexibility and lets you. Um, specify exactly what you're looking for and things like that that can make it more helpful. But if you just want to drop in like a couple reports and especially if they're static reports that don't change or don't need um, data on the fly, you can just drop them in and it's not um, it's not going to help you that much if you use the complicated version. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so you're going to use the required parameter with the report report name. I'm sorry, with the curly brace percentage version. Um, and this is something that we, I think, briefly alluded to in the Query Builder training, but you can use parameter names that will get friendly out of box. And those parameter names are available both in query reports and dashboard reports. Um, and they're things where you can basically type to search and then add multiple values. So you can say, OK, I'm going to include pages 141, and I'm going to include the page name lots and things like that. And it'll give you, um, it'll give you suggestions for that and let you fill in multiple to be used in the page or used in the dashboard. Um, so this is one of the benefits of using the curly brace percent uh, way of writing, a way of including reports, which is that you can 
add attributes to the input parameters. Um, the label is similar to what we used. The label is similar to what we used uh, on the query report that suggests. Sorry. Let's get back to where we are. Oh, okay, here we are. Uh, the label changes what it says here. So instead of having um, some really complicated long text, you just get join date. Um, hint will show up as light gray helper text. Uh, type can be really cool. Type shows a date or type date shows a date picker. Um, so you can make stronger recommendations to your colleagues about the way that data should be formatted rather than just hoping that people know that dates are formatted in four digit year, two digit month, two digit day. And then you can also set a default in here. So it gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot more elements that you can control by using the curly brace percent the piece of a report and uh, we're looking at required parameters. So it has the required parameters with the type date. So that is going to be and then um, in the 30 days after start date. So this is making it reusable. So what we're going to be doing is creating a new dashboard report that includes two query reports, a required parameter and some HTML. So the first piece of this dashboard is just going to be basic arbitration. You can put in whatever you want in the arbitrary HTML. It can be extra friendly because sometimes we need <laughs> some extra happiness. <laughs> okay. Um, and we don't do HTML training, but there's plenty on the internet. Okay. Um, so actually we are, this example is in the client con 2018 instance. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in mine as well. The report failed. It's almost like that was planned as part of the demonstration. Um, okay, so the report failed. The report has a lot of information that it needs to know um, in order to actually run the report. So I'm going to edit the report to give it some of that information. Um, so you'll notice that the format is value as parameter name. So value as parameter name. And that's important to note because it's not an especially intuitive setup. Um, so it can be a little confusing, but we can run this. Now we have actual data. Okay. Um, and then you can actually put in text around it, around that as well, because all we're pulling in is just one number, and so it's a random number that we don't we don't have to know this thing unless there's 
Um, what are those books, like when you're making reports to make sure that they're understandable to people who aren't just you? No, that's more of a best practice than something that you actually need to learn. Okay, so that worked. Um, and then we can actually do the same thing with an additional report. So we're getting two different reports in the same dashboard, one on top of the other, that are showing uh, the number of actions and also the number of new users. This many actions and this many new users. Um, because this is now, the blank line doesn't actually put in a line break. So if we wanted to style that better, we would need to put in a break or paragraph. Cool. So we have two reports now. What's wrong with the report that I have right now? Um, so you're always going to get actions from the 1st of June 2018 for the next 30 days. And so you're always only going to get actions and new users from June. Um, which is fine if you're trying to report on June, and also less fine if you're trying to report on any other time in the entire world. And in general, it's best practice to separate out the actual like period that you're reporting on from the report, so that you can reuse the same report over and over. Both for consistency and for ease of use. So we need to make this report reusable. Um, and we're going to do that with the required parameters. And I have a Cool. Um, so I'm going to add the required parameter at the top and then also put in that variable. So we have all this, but instead of saying an explicit date here, I'm just going to say start date. Um, so we're keeping 30 days, so it'll still be a month-long period, um, but we're going to have start date here. So you can change the number of dates. Okay. So this is hoping that I actually know what the format of a date is. Um, and action kit would be like this, which is again, most of y'all. Zero actions and zero new users because this is a dummy instance that really only had data from June. Cool. Um, so instead of having just the uh, blank line where I need to remember the way that I'm supposed to format a date, you can put in type date. And that gives you an actual date picker, which is incredible. And you can still type the plain date. Um, but you also have some guidance on how to select dates. Great. So we're again getting number of actions and new users. Um, I'm not going to do this part live, but this is just another demonstration that you can use um, arbitrary HTML to style your reports. Um, and yeah, so the next piece, so that's kind of the basic version of this report. Um, the next piece is just flagging. I think well, did you do the example training at time I'm, I'm sorry, what'd you say? You, you got muffled there for a moment. Did you do the Django training at ClientCon? I did. 
Okay, cool. So this will look familiar to you. Um, you can use Django, both the built-in and Action Kit custom tags and filters for um, for your reports for your query builder. So you can show different content if it's a donation page versus if it's a um, any other type of page. 